That's today. All right. So welcome, welcome, welcome. More word problems, story problems. Uh, we did a problem yesterday involving geometry. Remember the, the garden one? So today we do a little bit different one. We have a box. And, uh, you know, a lot of times we need to be familiar with the problems. And problem recognition is a really important part of being able to do these math problems. So um, I've seen a lot of them like this. And so you kind of get used to doing them. Same will happen for you. Okay, a box with a square base and no top is to be made from a square piece of cardboard. So I have a square piece of cardboard. By cutting four inch squares from each corner and folding up the sides as shown in the figure. The box is to hold 100 cubic inches. How big of a piece of cardboard is needed? So this thing's square and what we're going to do is we're going to cut out corners. So we're going to cut this corner, this corner, this corner, and this corner. Now, does everybody recognize, because this, this was hard for people to see last year, does everybody recognize if I, if I uh, fold on the green edges, if I cut these pieces off and fold up on the green edges, can you tell that I'm, I'm going to get a box? And I'll probably have to put some tape there or something, right? But I don't have a top to it. But it, it will hold something. Uh, 100 cubic inches, that's a, that's a measurement for what? Is that area? That's volume, right? And so we need to come up with an expression for volume. Namely that volume is equal to length times width times height. I need to know those three pieces. Do we know how much we're cutting out of each corner? How much are we cutting out of each corner? Four. So I'm going to write that. So if we cut four out of each corner, the question is, what is the dimension? What are the dimensions going to be in my new box? What are the dimensions going to be in my new box? Do you know what this length is of the entire box of the piece of cardboard? No, so we'll call it X. If we know that's X, what is this length right here going to be that I'm pointing to here? Is it going to be bigger than X or smaller than X? Minus 8. How do you get minus 8? Minus the 4 on top, 4 on the bottom. Very good. X minus 8. How about this measurement here? X minus 8. We have now enough information to talk about the volume. Volume is equal to length times width times height. The length of this box is going to be how long? X minus 8 times what's the width of this box x minus 8 what is the height of the box four when I fold it up I get four right when I fold up the edges could be four tall all right so that equals my volume what's my volume 100. Do you see something I can do to both sides right away? Divide by the 4. So I will end up with x squared minus 16x plus 64 is equal to 25. Yes, no? Okay. What should I do now? Subtract 25. x squared minus 16x plus 39 equals settle. That's Spanish for zero. So, um, does that factor? Very good, savvy. X minus 3, X minus 13. What are the solutions for X? X could be 3 and 13. Let's think about in the context of the problem. 
Could this entire length of the side of the piece of cardboard be three? Tara's shaking her head. Why? Because I cut out eight, so I'd have negative five left. So that doesn't work. Could this entire length be 13? Yeah, so it looks like 13 works. And since it's a square piece of cardboard, it looks like I should have a 13 by 13 uh, inch piece of cardboard and that that will work. Let's actually try it. If this edge is, uh, if X is 13, what's the length? Five, what's the width? Five and the height is four. Five times five is 25 times four is 100. Done and done. This kick. Upside down. Got it? Questions on that problem? Always have to check, make sure the solution fits the scenario of the problem. Yeah? Okay. Whew. Geometry. Similar triangles. We're going to do, uh, we're, we do three problems today. That's it. Lamp post. Last year, my pre-calc class made fun of my sketches. I've worked on them. What are you supposed to be? A uh, hill, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, whatever. Bunch of goons. All right, man's walking away from a lamppost. That's my lamppost. I can draw whatever I want to, and that's what I drew. How tall is that lamppost? Six meters. How tall is the man? He's two meters. And it says, how far from the lamppost is the man when his shadow is five feet? Should be five meters. Sorry about that. Five meters in length. See, I want to say that word, but... I don't say my NGs very well. And Chrissy has even made fun of me from time to time. So instead of saying five five meters long, I've changed it to five meters in length. So I've learned to adapt to those situations. Impressive, isn't it? So here's the shadow. Five meters. Okay. So as you look here, we have a... What kind of shape do we have? Triangle. And you know from geometry, you should come up with how many triangles? Dose. Let's draw them. I've got a small triangle. And then I've got a big triangle. Are these triangles... <laughs> Are these triangles similar? How do you know? Do, do they share? Do, do they have? Do they both have a right angle? Do they share an angle? So if two angles are the same, does the third angle have to be the same? By angle, 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 two triangles are similar. If they're similar, their sides are? Starts with P, rhymes with Proportional? Proportional. Good. All right. <laughs> so this is X. Their so sides are proportional. So let's go with the small triangle, the green one, and, and we'll set up a proportion. We'll go height over uh, length. What's the height of the small one? Two over. What's the length? Five equals. What's the height of the lamppost? Six over, what's the length of that one? X plus five. Not five X, not X, X plus five. I need to count for both of those. Now what? Cross multiply, just algebra. So I, I got two X plus 10 is equal to 30. Uh, so two X is equal to 20. X is equal to 10 meters. Does that answer the question? The question is how far from the lamppost is the man? Does it actually re represent how far he is from the lamppost? It, it definitely does. So X is 10. Yep, X is 10. Nothing wrong with shouting out answers. I like it, even if they're not correct. 
I did that this summer a lot. I, I told our the, the fellow students, I was like, just think, you guys, and they were all teachers. What if what if we were teaching math class and nobody shouted out answers? I said, that would be tough, wouldn't it? They're like, yeah. I said, let's just, let's just give it our best shot. So you got these really intelligent people in the room and taking, like, you know, 10 math co classes beyond calculus, and they're shouting out answers, and the professor's like, were you guys completely lost? You know, <laughs> we weren't anywhere near, but that's okay. It was fun. We tried. We tried. This is a harder problem. But this is a problem you had last year, and this is a problem you're going to have on your homework test. And I think I even put this on the test at, for the end of the unit. This you are going to have to learn how to use. This is very important. The quantity of a 60% acid solution must be mixed with a 30% solution to produce, I, I guess if you, you need me to say it, 30% acid, okay? Uh, to produce 300 milliliters of a 50% solution. So what we have, we we got two beakers. One's got 60% acid. The other 40% I don't really know. Maybe it's uh, water. And so you're going to dump some of that into a beaker, and then you're going to take the 30% dump some of that into a beaker. It's got to be this high, and at the end of the day, only half of it can be acid. The other half has to be water or whatever else. But it has to reach this exact amount. So I don't just do this because I need to teach it. I do this because when I actually do these problems in real life now, this is how I actually do them. You're like, you don't do these problems in real life. Trust me, when you know math really well, you actually use this stuff, and it becomes pretty cool. So I need to write one expression for the total amount. No, no, we'll, we'll start with acid. That, that's where your brains want to be. We'll do the total one after. Acid. Brains and acid, that doesn't really go well together. <laughs> Okay, so acid. I have beaker A. If I dump a hundred milliliters from beaker A, which is sixty percent acid, so I dump a hundred milliliters out, how many of those milliliters will be acid? I dump out 60. You take 60% times the amount you dumped out, right? So we have 60% of beaker A plus how much of beaker B will be acid? 30% of beaker B will be acid. Here's the tough one, A for the day, whoever gets this. How much total acid are we going to have in our beaker at the end? Good try. Incorrect. Try again. 90, 50, 50%, 50%, I need a number, 50% of what? 50% of 300, 150, yes! Larissa, you need to speak up. It's okay, we won't make fun of you. We won't laugh if you get it incorrect. We'll just uh, we'll make fun of your hillbilly prom, prom uh, get up today. Okay, so we got acid is that. So that's the total amount of acid that we got. Now now we have the total amount of the mixture. Okay, so let's try to wrap our brains around this. So I'm, I'm taking beaker A and I dump out 100 milliliters. If I dump out 100 milliliters, how much did I actually dump out? 100, good. So whatever I dump out from A is what I dumped out. And if I dump out 100 milliliters from B, what did I actually dump out? Exactly what I dumped out, B. And how much do we have to dump out total? 300. That's. Does that make sense that, that we have to have 150, which is acid? See, that's 50%, 150 out of 300. That's my acid, that's my total. Jesse just said, oh, it clicked, right? Yeah, that's okay. It, it takes time for this stuff to work like that, all right? So we've, we've got that. Okay, so how are you going to solve this problem? All of it equals one variable. So this is a system. System of equations is two or more equations. You're going to solve for one variable and substitute it in, right? You have many ways of solving systems. You can make a table, you can use a graph, you can use substitution, or you can use such with an E 
Elimination, let's do that instead. That's more fun. So I'm going to write this one over again. 60% times A would be 0.6A plus 0.3B equals 150. <clears throat> we did substitution yesterday. We do substitution all the time. You guys remember how elimination works? You learn in algebra uh, you know, over the course of two years that if you add two equations together, their solution is still the same. It works out like that. So I can add these together and not change the solution. But I want to cancel out a variable. Well, I have a 0.6a here. What should I have in front of this a instead of a 1? A negative 0.6. So I'm going to multiply everything in the top by a negative 0.6. Right? Right? So I have negative 0.6a plus negative 0.6b. What's 300 times negative 0.6? Negative 180. Now I add them together. What happens to the a's? Gone. What's negative 0.6b plus 0.3b? Negative 0.3b equals what's negative 180 plus 150. Negative 30. Divide both sides by negative 0.3. B is the number of milliliters from B that I should dump, which is 100. How much from A then? 200. A for the day. If I dump out 100 milliliters of B, how many milliliters of that are acid? 30. 30 acid. If I dump out 200, how many milliliters of that are acid? 60% of 200, which is 120. And if you add those together, you get... 150. So we do have 150 milliliters of acid, but we should dump out a total of 200 from A, 100 from B. We're good to go. Got it? Any questions on that? You're going to have to let it sink in over time. Uh, I'm going to pause the video, and I'm going to write down your homework assignment. Uh, last year, I'll be honest, uh, Chrissy can uh, tell you this, I gave them a lot of problems, and uh, some of the problems were just flat out too hard. And... Uh, the, the book does not have a lot of these type of problems in there. They have more complicated percentage problems. Problems where, like, if you have, well, we won't even get into it, okay? I'll, I'll do an example later on. You'll be, you're better off. They were the guinea pigs last year. You guys reap the benefits. It's just all there is to it. So um, I will go ahead and I'll put your assignment up there. They should be problems that you can do. But just realize this. Nobody is going to walk away from these assignments and just get everything. It's like, oh, I got all these problems, no no issue at all. A very few will be able to do that. You guys should have some questions. That's only normal. These are not easy, okay? You're going to struggle with them. You will struggle. It's okay. Aaron.